Um, so how many people have used Ohm before? Just for fun, it's Ohm, Ohm. Uh, how about React? Great, great, great. It's a new framework that came out from Facebook that does a virtual DOM. They build up the DOM and they add event binding, basically their own event delegation loop. And then Ohm is on top of that and they compile Clojure to JavaScript through ClojureScript and that runs there too. You will never use these developer tools if you have Ohm. It will change the DOM and it will actually show you this like weird JavaScript that's compiled that you'll never understand. My point is that it's really important to be close to the web as much as you can be. So I just wanted to pick one example and just see how we would build this with jQuery, Backbone, and then with Marionette. So I just picked a Facebook store. And this is my friend Brian, Brendan. It needs a template. We can do that pretty easily and represent that pretty easily. And then we could even build it with some jQuery. I don't think anyone would do this now, but you could, right? Like you can dollar template to get the HTML, build the HTML, just parse it, assign some events like a click handler here and there, and then do a dollar get, and when it comes back, update the template, update the HTML. It's not so bad. And in fact, if we look at the backbone equivalent, it's doing almost the same thing. We have a simple view with some events, a render function that just runs the template and assigns the HTML. Under hood, we see Backbone is actually doing what we did with jQuery just automatically. So if we wanted to build Backbone, I'm not suggesting you do, but when we look at it, if you wanted to build Backbone, the design behind it is really simple. Every view has an element, and we're going to render HTML into it. So if you were just build Backbone from scratch, you could just use these two functions, create element and bind events. Create element does what we were first doing with jQuery and creates a new element. And then bind events loops through the events hash that we defined above and then just binds the events one after the other. So I mention this because Backbone emerged from jQuery as some really solid principles. It didn't just come from no anywhere. And in one, people began using it a lot. And I think the reason for this is it just added a design layer to help you compartmentalize your JavaScript in a really nice way. But of course, Backbone runs into issues. And this is where Marionette comes in. So the first one that you might think of when you're building a story is it can get complicated. For example, maybe that comment section, the bottom of a story is or should be in its own view. Another thing is that your stories might have a lot of different types. Like we have a lot of different types of stories. And the third is that there are like a lot of little details that go in a lot of events and things. So in Backbone, how would you build a separate comments view that would be included in the story view? Well, it would look something like this. We would instantiate a new view, call it the comments view, and then render the story view and add it to the story view right there where we uh, find the comment section and then add the element from the comments view right into it. And so we could do this in Backbone. It just becomes a little tedious. Another example where Backbone might break down is if we decide that each comment in the comments view should be its own view, maybe because you can like a comment, or like you can click on a little drop down and like report it if it's really bad, or maybe just because of internationalization, like the common view is complicated, so we want to split it out. So in Backbone, you could do that too. You could loop through all the comments, and for each one, create a new view. It would look something like this, and Backbone supports these kind of lists really natively or really naturally, but it becomes tedious. There's boilerplate here. You wouldn't want to use Backbone to create these lists of subviews all the time. You might want to like start sorting it, filtering it, and that becomes tedious. So Backbone is great. It took jQuery and added some compartmentalization, but it too suffered from some shortcomings just dealing with atomic views. So Marionette comes into the story 
and offers three different types of views. A model view for rendering a simple view with, that's backed by one model, a list view, and a layout view. And I can show you these pretty quickly. So here's the item view for the story. We're just rendering the story fully backed by one model. Notice how there's no render method. There's no render method because we don't need it anymore. We can assume that it's enough just to get the data from the story. We already have the template, and then we'll render and add it to the element. Marinette does that for you. The next one is a layout. So with a layout, Marinette comes in and says, you probably have some regions. And a region could be anything from an app with a sidebar and a header to, in the story view, a comments region. You're always going to put something in there. So here we define the comments region. We say it belongs in this doc comments, this div with a class comments. And when we show the comments region, we're going to insert this view. So that's great. And then lastly, to show all the comments, we just create a collection view in Marionette. And we say, for each item in the collection, we're going to show a view with this class. Done. We don't have to write that complicated render function with the for each loop that creates them for us. Marinette just abstracts that. So I like to think of this stack as jQuery plus Backbone plus Marinette. And specifically, jQuery plus views plus view types. Obviously, Backbone has some more things to it, and Marinette has some more things to it. But if you look at this evolution over the course of maybe five years, seven years, it's been a really steady progress. jQuery made a lot of advancements. Backbone came in. A lot of people worked on their own frameworks that either competed with Backbone or added something to it. Marinette came in there and has done really well. And it's been a simple progression with design on top of design with solid foundation. And I'm just going to go back to this one more time. I think this contrasts really strongly with what Ember has done with a massive stack and what Angular has done with their own technologies and what React has done with the virtual DOM. They're all great in and of themselves. And they do offer some new technologies. But when I think about what I want to work on, I want to work as close to the browser as possible using those APIs and using those tools. And I think Marinette is the best fit for that. It's a great learning environment to be able to set a breakpoint at any point and have a call stack that's only like seven high. I mean, I'm just going to call this out. Notice at the bottom is just a jQuery event handler. One jQuery, two jQuery, one Marinette. My, now I'm in user code with the orders app. And now I'm back in Marinette. And then this is my handler. It's like a call stack of like seven. I can understand it at every point. And, and yet I have the design to be able to build out a large app. So. That's Marinette in a nutshell.